that's actually a really good segue to my next question, too. Um, one of the little things we've been doing on Save Jersey recently is I, I, I try to do, like, some interactive stuff every now and then and kind of gauge, you know, what, what makes people interested, what, what engages our readers. And uh, I, I propose doing a contract with New Jersey for the, for the exact same reason you're just talking about, the need to have some kind of cohesive, fiscal, conservative message that people can rally around. Um, and I mean, again, kind of going back to our, our beginning conversation, that's kind of the, the way I, you know, I look at the path that I, I would like to see our party go down, and then some other people on the different ideological extremes. I think it's about having a, a set of principled conservative positions that you map out, everybody's disciplined and talks about them, and that, that they're capable of getting widespread support. So we started doing this contract with New Jersey. I posted the idea, put up some suggestions. I probably have gotten a few hundred emails over the course of a few weeks for people to read the blog with different suggestions, eliminate COA, reform DIFUS, a variety of different things. So I thought that since I had you anyway, I'd ask you just, obviously there's a lot of things that could be fixed in New Jersey if we had the opportunity, but what were maybe just some of the few things that if you were elected governor or if you were in the leadership and a majority in the legislature, what were some of the first things that you'd want to see attacked in some kind of contract with America type agreement with the taxpayers? And I mean, uh, you know, the, the fundamental problem in, in the state is the overall tax, whether you're talking about property taxes or income taxes or sales taxes. And, and so that is the first thing that I think you need to look at. And, you know, that goes back to the way we fund our educational system. And that has been a problem with property taxes in this state for as long as I can remember. Uh, we, and we've heard governor after governor, administration after administration talk about Nobody has ever done anything about it. And I think we really want to uh, start to turn this situation around. We have to figure out how to uh, fund the educational system. We just can't keep driving up property taxes year after year after year. So for me, we, uh, I think you should strip down this whole budget. Uh, of course, as you've, many people have heard me say before, if it costs $12,000 uh, $12, a year to educate a child, I can't understand why any district will get 20,000 a child. It just does not make any sense to me. And so when you're talking about educational funding, I think the first step is making the educational funding there for every child in New Jersey. And it cannot be so disproportionate that it, so by lowering how much we're giving some districts, you're going to lower that overall burden. We're going to uh, reduce the property tax problem. Then we need to come up with a how we're going to fund it long term. And so that would be where I would start. Uh, now, after we get the property tax situation, then we just start to get some of the other taxes. And I think a lot of the other problems we've created, like the affordable housing, are no longer as much of an issue. Trenton is, it's so ironic to me that we create all these problems by moving up taxes and making things so unaffordable. And then all of a sudden, somebody wakes up and says, geez, I don't have any affordable housing. Right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I mean, you just made it too expensive to live here. Lower the overall burden, uh, reduce taxes, uh, then we're not going to have to deal with some of these issues, and we won't even have to worry about color because things will be affordable. And you're, then you're going to create not only affordable houses, you're going to create affordable lives for people. And so that I think is really the key. What you see is then as many people catering to a few at the expense of the many, and uh, we see that quite a bit. I think with our New Jersey politics, is a special interest. Uh, a lot of times, I have a big say into what's going on, and so you get a little special interest in that, the empty expenses, and New Jersey as a whole, and we just have to end that culture. Right. So, something else I wanted to ask you about, the last thing I wanted to ask you about, actually, that's uh, kind of uh, district-specific. Um, and over the past year, you've had a very public feud with uh, State Senator Jim Whalen. I just was wondering maybe if you could give us a little background on how that started with the different letters going back and forth and everything and just, you know, where, where you see it today, your relationship with them. As I was saying that we, we sat down with Senator Whalen in March of 08 to try to start some communication, talk about things in the district and, uh, and the need to try to work together to do the things in the district. And unfortunately, you know, while we all said we would work together in that meeting, there has been no well, and he doesn't, hasn't really spoken to us or talked about any legislation with us uh, or anything related to the district since then. So, you know, it hasn't been the, the relationship we would have liked to have seen in an effort to, you know, bring people the best government that we can. The public feud uh, was related to some discussion about the sale of Deerfield in Atlantic City. Press Atlantic City interviewed me uh, about 
out in your field one day and asked me uh, what I was hearing, and I said, you know, that I wasn't hearing a whole lot. I, they did have an $800 million offer in national gaming, which they didn't take. I think Senator Whalen was probably involved in that process of the team deciding not to enter into the agreement with Penn National. And I had heard rumors that, uh, that there were some in government that were favoring Steve Wynn for the development of Peter Field. And he took that very personally. Uh, I didn't say that Whalen had spoken to Wynn. I didn't, it wasn't anything uh, related to, Steve, uh, to Jim Whalen at all. It was related to the fact that I had heard, heard rumors throughout the state that people in state government uh, were favoring Steve Wynn. And so he proceeded to go on the radio uh, and told me to, that I should shut up and all kinds of nonsense. And I was so <laughs> that went back and forth. He really wanted He just went on the radio and said to shut up. And he followed up letter about calling him out for having a relationship with Steve Wynn, and so I wrote him a letter back saying I did no such thing, go back and read the article again, take a look at what I said, because I did not say anything that you are perceiving that I said, and he took it a little too personally, but so since then, you know, it's been a little bit of back and forth, uh, we, we, everything's cordial when we see him, uh, we try to work together and we do some of these forums and stuff, but uh, certainly not the relationship that we expect from somebody in the, minor, in the majority party having the ability to develop legislation, control legislation, working with people in the minority party to get ideas, debate issues, you know, everything that government should be doing in the democracy that we live in, where you should have Republicans and Democrats uh, bringing up ideas, debating issues, ultimately coming up with legislation, but and trying to develop the best legislation you can. We just unfortunately did not get that in New Jersey. Democrats have control. They do what they want to do. Oftentimes, way too fast than they should, as we saw with the affordable housing issues now. Uh, but that's how they're governing. And so, you know, while we do what we can do to point out the failures that we see in the public policy and just the sheer speed they use to get this system, uh, a lot of times it's only talk because they usually don't care what we have to say. Yeah, I think they're afraid to debate too. You'd probably agree with that. One of my one of my favorite recent video clips from Trenton is I think it was um, Assemblyman Weber debating Matt Millum, and he just Matt Millum looked like he was a deer in headlights. It was terrible. You probably saw it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I mean, uh, Matt's got his own issues on stuff, but yeah, I mean, the, uh, you can't imagine some of the things that uh, were set up there. I, I, <laughs> They're not prepared a lot of times, and I don't know the answers. Now they have a staffer there trying to whisper in your ear what the answers are, but you can imagine a legislator developing legislation that apparently you think is good for the state, but he doesn't even really know the answers to the questions that may come. Well, I, I do give him a little bit of credit, though, because he came up with that whole thing to help people figure out what is a handicapped spot and which isn't. I guess that's coming up for a vote soon, right? I saw that. I <laughs> I wanted to ask you is, um, you know that there's been a lot of talk about who will fill this new constitutional role of lieutenant governor, and um, there's been... Sure, but if somebody came to you and said, I'm really going to try to get this state turned around, uh, do the right thing for the people to lower the tax burden for them, and I really need you there to work with me to get this done, uh, I think you'd have to consider it, but certainly not something that we're focused on right now. Cool. Well, that's all I needed you to say to keep the drum beat going, so. <laughs>